Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Jag from Jaggy Sports, and uh, yeah, no, hope everybody had a good weekend. I know it's Tuesday, but whatever. So, make sure you hit subscribe, like, notification to this channel. Let's get right down to it. Ben Simmons live pre press conference earlier this morning, and it was quite the scene because, like Stephen A. said, and you'll see this clip in a second there are some holes in his in his press conference that leads people to believe he was lying about mental health check this out hey ben there was so much like sourced reporting around everything going on with you so i guess just so you're saying that the, the mental health issue preceded you requesting the tree uh, in the off season. Okay. I guess, can you just shed a little light on the timeline and everything? Yeah, for me, it wasn't, that was never, the mental health has nothing to do with just the trade. You know, it was, it was a bunch of things that I was dealing with as a person in my personal life that I don't really want to go into depth, to depth with. Um, but yeah, I'm here now. So, you know, it's a blessing to be, you know, uh, in an organization like this. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting back on the floor and, and building something great here. First off, welcome to Brooklyn. Uh, for you personally, moving forward, I'm curious what the kind of things are, if you can even quantify them, have to happen, I guess, for you to be in the right headspace, to be out on the court and competing. Just staying on top of what I need to stay on top of um, and being consistent with that is getting to the place where I can do that. Hey, Ben, I wanted to ask you um, a couple of things. When you played your last game, with the Sixers, what was going through your mind? What were your last emotions? Uh, and what was the straw that basically snapped that made you say, it's time to go? Um, I don't think it was really that. It was more so just a, it was just piled up. A bunch of things that have gone over the years to where I just knew I wasn't myself and I needed to get back in, into that place of, you know, being myself and, and being happy as a person um, and taking care of my well-being. Um, and that was like, the, that was the major thing for me. Um, it wasn't about the basketball, it wasn't about the money, anything like that. Um, you know, I want to be who I am and, and get back to, you know, playing basketball at that level and, you know, being myself. And the last game? Last game? Yeah, what, what's the kind of what was going on through your mind after the last game? Um, I need to get in a good place mentally, honestly. Um, that was the main thing. Then when you look at this roster, the makeup of this team, there are times where you could be on the floor with KD and Kyrie. You could be out there without either one of them. How do you see your, how do you see your role in fitting in and or what kind of conversations have you had with Steve about uh, what that would be? Yes, I think it's just staying aggressive, playing to to my strengths and that's, you know, being a playmaker and making the right plays, um, setting my guys up and then defensively, obviously, um, locking down who I need to lock down. Um, so I'm excited to, you know, get in the floor with these guys is incredible team, incredible talent. So, um, super excited. Hey Ben, how's it going? Welcome to Brooklyn. Um, obviously Kyrie was away from basketball for a little while at the beginning of the season. He was talking about how difficult it was for him to practice, to play against high caliber players because everyone's, obviously in their seasons. What, what were you able to do while you were away from the team that would, I guess, be able to help you prepare for this moment? Just being consistent with my work. Um, every day, being very consistent with my work, uh, make, making sure I'm taking care of my body um, and then staying on the floor. So I was on the floor pretty much every day, um, just trying to stay ready physically. Kind of just touching that a little bit. So have you been playing pickup, like lifting, I guess? What has your routine been since you've been away from the team and everything? Right, so lifting, um, Pilates, all of that. And then on court, being with my trainers, um, ones, twos. We've had some bodies for, you know, three and three, four and four. Hey, Ben, I, I know you want to, you're moving forward. You're all about today and, and what's happening uh, in Brooklyn. But I, just again, with all that source reporting around what was going on with you, I guess just for Sixers fans, like, did you feel like you couldn't get back to the place where you wanted to be in Philadelphia? And was that part of the reason you asked for a trade? I, I guess, could you explain that a little bit? Yeah, I think that was part of it. I think, you know, I just wasn't in the place there um, to do that. Um, and a lot of things had happened over that summer to where I don't, I, don't, I didn't feel like I was getting that help. Um, 
but it is what it is. You know, I don't have any, it wasn't a personal thing towards, you know, any player or, or um, coach or, you know, owners or anything like that. Um, it was about myself, you know, getting to, to a place where, you know, I need to be. When it comes to that mental recalibration, has it helped or even how much has it helped just to have a change of pace, a different environment, uh, where to take your skills? Um, I think it has. I think um, just the way everybody's welcomed me here um, has been great. You know, it's been a very positive experience, you know, just, just being here so far. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to what's to come. And a couple quick ones, just following up on the Philly stuff. Why do you think it got so bad there? If I knew, I, I would tell you everything. But um, there's just a lot of things internally that, you know, had to happen um, over time. And it just got to a place where I don't think it was good for me um, mentally. So, you know, it is what it is. It happened and, and uh, moving forward. So, And as far as playing with Kyrie and KD, how do you think what you do accentuates what they already do on the floor well? Uh, I think it's going to be scary. Um, Having those guys run alongside me um, is, you know, multiple different weapons on the floor. And I think at the pace we want to play at, it's, it's going to be unreal. I'm wondering, like, as as someone who's, you know, plays basketball for a living and loves the game, was it difficult to, you know, kind of stick with that? And what was the most challenging thing about that? Um, not doing what I love. Um, that was definitely the, the most difficult part, especially for that long. And, you know, when you take something away from somebody that, you know, what they love doing, it's, it's, it's hard for anybody. Um, so, you know, over time, you know, I worked on that and, and trying to stay in a positive place and get to, you know, where I need to be. Um, it was difficult, but, you know, um, you know, I'm blessed to be in this situation and have this opportunity. Ben, did you, who was your supporting cast that helped you get through this time? And was it hard not to, it seemed like for a while, every day somebody was saying something, whether it was somebody, Sixers, media, there was, did you pay attention to that? And did any of that bite you? Um, I mean, this is the first time I'm really speaking out, right? So last six months, I had everybody saying something, but not everybody knew. So I can't really say anything negative towards anybody that was saying something because they just didn't know. And I'm not the type of person to try to put somebody down for something I don't know about. Um, that's just not me as a man. So, um, you know, I have my family there supporting me from day one. Um, friends, you know, I, I've made a ton of friends that work with the Sixers too. So it was never, you know, a personal thing. It was just for my well-being um, to get where I need to be to. And is there anything that was said that you heard that you'd like to clear up that you... you... Man, if we, we'll be here for a while if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> There's been, I mean, every everybody had a source, right? There's hundreds of sources. I apologize if I'm getting ahead of ourselves too much, but you guys do have a game in Philly in a couple of weeks. Do you think you can be ready for that? You know, physically, mentally, you know, I imagine that's a pretty. I hope so. Lisa Salters. Hey Ben, uh, just you, you saying that you you know you want to get back to the to being the guy, the player that you are mentally, physically. Just where are you now mentally and physically? Where do you think you are? Um, physically, I think you know over. Last six months I've been working, so I feel physically pretty good. Um, mentally, I'm getting there, so that's a, it's an ongoing thing to just stay on top of that. Um, but I'm, uh, I think I'm heading in the right direction. Thank hey, you. Ben. you. Hey, Ben. You said you were looking forward to that game against the Sixers. I'm curious, do you think the way all of this went down, the proximity, the quality of the rosters, you know, the caliber of players, yourself and James, do you think, A, that this is instantly now going to become a fierce rivalry? Um, I mean, I've been on the other side, so I've played Brooklyn in the first round and had them booing and Jared Dudley talking shit to me. So, um, that was a lot of fun though. I actually, I love Jared for that. Um, but no, nah, I, I want everybody to be looking at us like we're the best team and we got to get there. Um, it's going to take time, but, um, I'm positive we can do that. And, you know, I believe in, you know, coaches and, and the organization here and the players, uh, to do that. And secondly, you talked about having to get in the right mental space to be able to play when you see, or maybe you don't see them, when people are commenting or opining that this was not real, this is fake, these are lies, whatever. Do you take offense to that? No, because I can't tell somebody how they feel, right? I can't tell somebody, you know, 
you need to do this or that. Cause I don't know how they feel. I don't know what they're going through. I don't know how they're processing things. So I can't do that, but I can't also put somebody else, you know, down for having those comments. I'm just not that person, you know, I'm never going to put my teammates down, um, my coaches or anything like that. So it's just, you know, it is what it is. Malika Andrews. Hey, Ben, um, I, I have two for you. I'm just curious. One, what was the communication like with Philadelphia on the way out? And as you look back, is there anything in order to kind of move forward that you would have done differently? Um, yeah, I think the the communication, I spoke to Elton. I spoke to Josh Harris. They called me. I spoke to Doc Rivers. Um, and I spoke to Tobias. There was a couple other places I spoke to about it. And, you know, they, they were happy, you know, for me to just be in a different situation and, you know, to, for me to get back on the floor eventually. So um, now overall, I think, you know, they, they supported me well enough through this. Did you speak with Joel? No, I did not. Thank you. Been a uh, trade deadline day. Were you pretty nervous? And what were your emotions and when you got the call, when you got the word that it was done and who, who gave you that information? Um, yeah, I was sitting there on my laptop with the TV in front. So my phone just started blowing up um, and it didn't feel real for a few days, honestly. So once I actually drove into the city, I was like, wow, I'm really here, um, which was very surreal because I got my family 30 minutes away. You know, I got my grandparents 30 minutes away. So it's nice to have them, you know, close by also. And uh now I think um, just this whole experience has been kind of surreal. Was there like an emotional release of any sort? I don't think it really hit me until I was, you know, by myself. Um, Cause I was around my, my brothers and friends at the time. Um, so once it really happened, I had to really take, take some time to myself and really process it. Michael Grady. I'm just curious, that surreal feeling, Ben. Um, you hadn't been around teammates in, on a bench setting in a while. What were your emotions like? yesterday and celebrating with your teammates and watching the game unfold. Yeah, um, for me, it felt like it, it should feel always, you know, uh, my teammates embraced me as soon as I got here. Um, and then besides that, the fans were very welcoming, um, which was great. And, you know, the energy just in the locker room and, and just around the building was, it was uh, terrific. How soon after the trade, like who were your first conversations with? I know you said you were with your brother and then how soon after kind of digging through all your you know, texts and whatever you were getting, did you get to kind of really talk to uh, Katie and Kyrie and, you know, talk about what would happen going forward? Yeah, I mean, I spoke to Katie a couple of hours after. Um, and, you know, he, he was great in the phone, you know, it was very welcoming, so he's excited too. So, you know, I think it's just looking forward to getting on the floor with those guys uh, and that talent. David Aldridge. Ben, uh, specifically, you, you had a specific ball handling playmaking role in Philly. What do you think your specific role, your best role will be in Phil in uh, Brooklyn? I think uh, I, I try to compare it to my early seasons with J.J. Redick, um, Ersan Eliasova, and, and Marco Bellinelli when we were, um, I think we were playing the Nets in the first round, or Miami in the first round. And um, just the way we were flowing and playing, um, that's, how, that's how I know how to play basketball. I'm a team player. I like to see everybody – scoring, contributing in whatever way they can. Um, and that's the way you got to play to win. So, you know, if you, if you want to be a winner, you got to play with all the guys on the floor and, and use everybody's abilities, uh, you know, and maximize the, the abilities that everybody has. Otis Livingston. Hey, Ben, welcome to Brooklyn. Um, you know, there are going to be some people out there that are skeptical, that are going to say that James Harden was faking his hamstring injury and that you were uh, maybe faking your mental health issues. What do you have to say to those people that saw you smiling yesterday during a shoot around um, and then on the bench as well? What do you say to those people that have skepticism about that? And where are you in that process? They should be happy. I'm smiling, honestly. Um, I've had some dark times over these last six months. Um, and I'm just happy to be in this situation with this team um, and organization. So people are going to say what they want. They've said it the last six months and I haven't come to um, and it is what it is. So people are always going to have their own opinions. All right, given that, given comments like that, do you think there needs to be a change in how we address or how we think about athletes with their mental health? For sure. I, I don't think people really understand the, I don't even look at it as pressure. There's just so many things going on within, you know, basketball and life as people. Um, but it is what it is also. I understand the business. Side. I understand all that. Um, 
but that's that's something that you know people should be acknowledged and and address if they do feel like they need some help in areas um and it's okay to do that we have time for one more question christian Ben, what kind of work have you done to improve the free throw shooting percentage? No, I stopped working. Um, it's been in the gym, honestly. It's been in the gym working every day. Um, it's being consistent and, and getting that confidence. Definitely. Things I want to say, Stephen A. Lisa Salters asked, where is he mentally and physically? He said, physically, pretty good. Uh, mentally, I'm getting there. I feel like I'm heading in the right direction. And about skeptics about his mental health, he said, they should be happy I'm smiling because I've gone through some pretty dark times recently. What is your visceral reaction to all that you just heard? That he was ill-prepared for this press conference and he came across as an individual that simply was not telling the truth. And I don't say that with skepticism or skepticism or whatever, you know. I'm rooting for the brother. He's a spectacular player. You know I told you I voted for him for the Defensive Player of the Year. I think he automatically elevates Brooklyn uh, big time. And you know me, I'm Knicks first, New York always. Yeah. So the, if Brooklyn wins, I'm very, very happy. As long as, you know, Knicks ain't in the picture, but that's a different subject for another day. Ben Simmons had several holes in his discussion here. Number one, <clears throat> he said he wanted, he was having issues prior to his performance in the playoffs. Yes. Okay? So here's my point. Then why didn't you ask for time off instead of asking to be traded? You didn't have to ask to be traded. If it wasn't about the Sixers, if it wasn't about the organization, if it wasn't about the coach, if it wasn't about a Joel Embiid and your relationship or lack thereof with them, why did you ask to be traded then? That's number one. Number two, he's on the record here, and I wrote this down. He said mental health had nothing to do with anything. Well, aren't you making the case to the NBA and the Players Association that mental health was the reason that you needed this time off, but you should still get paid? Because if you have mental health issues, they can't confiscate your pay. So you didn't, you've, you've minimized your argument. You hurt your argument in that regard if you were still in pursuit for your money, which I've been told he is. And so when you look at it from that perspective, those are two major, major holes. Because you're saying it wasn't mental health issues. You just had personal issues. You also said it had nothing to do with the coach, the organization, the city, the fans, or an individual player, which we all assume would be Joel Embiid. Yet you never asked for time off. You asked to be traded. So there's inconsistencies there. Well, someone asked, what was the straw that broke the camel's back? Was there one event where he decided, I need to be out? And he said, multiple factors. Yes. It, it piled up. That was the term he it used. It piled it, up. It, it piled up, which, again, is inconsistent with what you were trying to say. You said you didn't have a problem with the organization. You said you didn't have a problem with the fans. You said you didn't have a problem with the player. You said you didn't have a problem with the coach. Well, who the hell you got a problem with? And if you got personal issues that are going on with you, that's not necessarily a mental health issue, unless you said it was mental health. He said, no, it's not mental health. I just had some issues that I needed to deal with. That's inconsistent with the argument that's been disseminated out there. Now, he hasn't spoken, so we didn't hear from him until today. But these were what all the reports were saying. And so as a result of that, I'm looking at it from that perspective. Then I'm looking at the fact that the moment you get traded, yeah, y'all had a game in Miami on Saturday, but last night was your first game in Brooklyn since the trade, which happened just three days earlier, and you on the bench smiling up a storm. The world is beautiful, suddenly, okay? These are all things that are inconsistent with a person that, according to the report, swore up and down they had mental health issues. And so as a result, these are the kind of things that people are going to look at. Now, in the end, well, you, let's say one thing. Let's sure. just clean one thing sure, up. Sure. You can be dealing with mental health, and mm -hmm. you can be in a moment where you're also smiling. Okay, that's so true. So both can be true. That's true, and I'm not saying that we, it we, can't. Let's be fair What I'm there. saying is what we've all been saying, people who, and I've gone on NBA Countdown, and I said this, mm -hmm. please understand mental health issues is a very, very serious Absolutely. thing, and you don't just throw that out for mm -hmm. no reason, okay? If he's having those issues, we definitely are sensitive to it. The problem is half the people out there don't believe him. And so when you saw that last night, just a couple of days after you got traded to Brooklyn, you recognized the fact that it was all about getting traded all along. Remember, when they mentioned the mental health issues, the first time we had heard that was when they reported for training camp. Mm -hmm. We hadn't heard that all summer. Yeah. Now, his camp says 
He said that to the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah, he said that in right? the press conference. He I'm, said they knew about it prior right. to the Sixers. And the Philadelphia 76ers have sworn, have sworn till the cows come home. They never heard a word about mental health issues until October. So somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. We don't know who it is. Yeah. We know who most people believe is lying. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it all comes down to this. In the end, you're a Brooklyn net. Period. You got KD and Kyrie as your teammates. Period. You're going to be out there. You're going to play ball. That's what it comes down to. But and again, but again, you're going to look at him with those in terms of this press yeah. conference. Wait. He was not prepared well enough for this press conference. We have a minute left. We'll do much more on this, obviously, tomorrow, and we'll hear from uh, Harden sure. live later. But he said, I think it's going to be scary, KD, Kyrie, beside me. The pace we want to play at, it's going to be unreal. Talk to me about on the court next 30 seconds. I think Brooklyn can win it all. I'm not definitively stating that. I've got to see it. Okay. But they can win it all. Ben Simmons himself, just Ben Simmons, without Seth Curry, without Andre Drummond, Ben Simmons can guard Giannis Antetokounmpo. He can guard a Jimmy Butler, a Tyler Hero, a Trey Young, and all of these guys. He could end up guarding James Harden mm. if they go against <laughs> Philly in the playoffs. Ben Simmons New is an rivalry. all-world defender. And pairing him with KD and Kyrie, that can win you a championship. We cannot rule it out. They are better, much better for this deal. Philly's better, but Brooklyn's more better. So there you have it. And the thing is, he actually says, um, you know, it wasn't about mental health. And they never heard mental health before the October training camp, the Sixers. That's the first time that they heard that. So now it's kind of like, okay, well, I agree. I, you know what? I totally agree with Stephen A. Somebody's lying, 100%. And um, a lot of people are pointing the finger and saying Ben Simmons is lying. Like, let's call it what it is. Everybody knows that it was about the money and he needed a loophole to get his money and he's saying it's not about the money. Well, actually it is, right? Because, you know, phenomenal talent. Um, don't get me wrong. I think Brooklyn is better after they made this trade, 100%. I, I said it when the trade went down, you know, Andre Drummond. They got Andre Drummond and, oh man, that guy is, that guy is a special talent. He brings so much uh, need for the Brooklyn Nets. But let's stick to the topic here. I believe that uh, Ben Simmons was lying. You know, that's just my opinion. Um, I don't want to say that, but he just, he just pretty much just said it. Ben Simmons just said in his press conference, it was not about, like, it wasn't about mental health. It's basically about personal issues. And so in, for, in order for him to get his money, he needed to claim something which was mental health and um you know uh in my opinion i think he's i think he's lying but you know i don't want to if it is indeed mental health uh you know i'm sorry to hear that but uh my personal opinion based on his comments saying him saying it, it wasn't about mental health well based on his comments I think that he is lying. That's my opinion. Um, you know, tell me what you guys think. Was he lying about his mental health status, Ben Simmons? And where do you, where do the Sixers go from here? Um, I'll bring you another clip on James Harden and his press conference. That's supposed to be coming up soon. So check that out and um, tell me what you guys think. Was Ben Simmons lying? And tell me what you guys think about uh, the Nets' chances. The Nets' chances uh, in actually making it to the finals because I think it's um, much better than the Harden when Harden was on the, on the floor with them. So leave a comment in the comment section and tell me what you guys think. This is Jag from Jaggy Sports.